What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade, basketball analysis coming to y'all with that classic analysis. We're going to talk about another team that will definitely for certain be in the lottery, and it's going to be the Orlando Magic. Hopefully they can get a superstar player in this up-and-coming draft because they will be picking another guy to add to this core of young talent. Let's look at Cole Anthony. A guy that I thought was a solid player, had a okay rookie season, didn't shoot efficiently, wasn't the greatest defender, wasn't the greatest playmaker, wasn't the greatest scorer, but he gave you some type of production. He had gave you some type of shot creation, and that's what he brings to the table, and that's what he does. We see, we'll see what he grown and improved in in year two. Going to have a bigger role because a lot of their guards are injured. They're going to need him to do a little bit more because he has experience. We'll see what he does. Mo Bamba, I was low on Mo Bamba coming into the draft. I'm low on Mo Bamba coming into this season. Just because he's not a great floor spacer, spacer not a great three-point shooter, not a great finisher. Good screen setter to a certain extent. Not good at that either to me. Plus, his rim protection was raw. He had the length and the size to do it, but never was great or elite at it ever. And he still has to work on that even though he showed it. Coming into the draft, he hasn't become close to that in the NBA. I'm low on Mo Bamba. He looks more like a bust, and I think they will figure out what they're going to do uh, do with him this year. He's going to get more playing time, more minutes, and we'll see what he becomes in the NBA. Um, Ignas, he's going to be playing, too, for this team. I think he is going to get certain type of minutes for this roster. Um, they are going to need people to play a lot of minutes because a lot of people are injured to see what they have and see what people can do and what they bring to the table to pick who they really want to build this team around. But I don't really see him being a significant impact player as he still is raw and he, he doesn't really have a lot of skills either, like a lot of players on this team. Wendell Carter Jr., he's up for extension. I'm low on Wendell Carter Jr. He can set screens. He's a good passer, but not the greatest finisher, not a great floor spacer, and also just – not really great at, at putting the ball in the basket while also not being a great defender either. So I don't really know what they're going to do with Wendell Carter. They brought him in to see what he, what he can they bring the best out of him and see what he can really become for their team. But if he's never going to be great or elite at anything, especially as a rebounder and rim protector or at least a floor spacer, he's just going to be a rotation big in his league just because he has the mobility and the size and a decent IQ that will build as he stays in the league. But other than that, I don't really see him getting a huge commitment money-wise because this guy should get $10 million or less just because he's a rotation center at best. Michael Cor Carter-Williams is going to ride the bench. Don't see him having a significant role on this team outside of just coming in there, giving them a combo guard that can, you know, get to the basket, make some plays, make some things happen, and that's going to be his role on this team. Jeff and James Ennis. These two guys, Jeff may not even be on the roster to play significant minutes, and if he does, I don't really see him making an impact. James Ennis, he's a guy that can give you a role player that knows what he is, what he brings to the table, can just fit in that, that need whenever they need those minutes to give to somebody. Gives them a switchable guy, too. Don't really see what his use is really going to be on this team because I don't see him winning a lot of games. Markel Fultz looked at bad last season. He was starting to build up. Then he ended up looking a little bad as the season was going on. Then he had his ACL injury. I look at Markel Fultz as this this year or next year will be his last year. With Orlando, I don't really see him having a future with this team or being a big part of this team. If you would have told me that two years ago, I would have seen it. After this ACL tear, I don't really see a future with him with Orlando. He has to build all the way back. But when he was playing last year, he didn't look great or amazing. He looked at it okay. Now he's coming off ACL injury. He got to rehab, get the rust off. He's just not going to be worth it at this point. So they should get rid of him too. Um, Garvey, I don't really see him having a huge role or playing a significant role on this team to me. He just a depth piece that they want to keep him. RJ Hampton is a guy that has potential, shows some shot creation ability, shows the ability to be a dynamic scorer, still has to prove his mid-range, still has to prove his shooting, still has to prove his playmaking and his defense. If he wants to be a legitimate, a legitimate guard in the NBA, he's still raw offensively in IQ and understanding how to get shots and spots to be able to make them. Until he figures that out, he's going to be a rotation player, has star potential, but has a long way to go to get there. Gary Harris is a guy that's fighting to stay in the league at this point. Got beat up, toe up for a couple years. We know he can play. 
We know he could be solid, but he doesn't have a real huge impact on his team just because I don't see him on his roster in the future, just because he was a salary filler and the guy they wanted to try out. But he's not going to be on his team long term. So he's going to get his minutes. He's going to play, do what he needs to do to keep his reputation and respect around the league. Then he's going to move on to another team. Jonathan Isaac, the best player on this team, raw offensively, took a huge step back because of the injury. We don't know when he's going to come back. We don't know how he's going to be. The injury may also impact his defense, his timing, his feel, and just rotations will be sloppy and not the same. That could take a huge hit on his development, and it could take him further to get to where he needs to be offensively. Plus, he's going to lose some steps defensively. Unfortunate for him, but he's 23. Hopefully, he can still become an all-star caliber player, which he has the potential to be. But this injury is real detrimental to his career. Robin Lopez is a big body that's going to come in and give you rebounding, screen setting, and he's going to be able to hit some shots um, in the post. And he's going to come in and do exactly that. Not much more, not nothing crazy, but he's just a solid center that can actually produce and play the position and give them quality minutes. Each one more, I don't really see him having a huge role on this team. He can score, not the greatest mid-range scorer, not the greatest three-point shooter, but a guy that can put the ball in the basket, given the time and the minutes in the lineups. And that's what they're going to ask him to do. Okiki, he's young, he's raw, he has a long way to go. Plus, they have a lot of guards that I feel are better than him that's going to get the minutes. He might be a G League type of player, might be good two to three years from now if they keep him. We'll see what he becomes. Terrence Ross, he should be off this roster. This team is going full rebuild. He likes to score. He likes to get minutes. He likes to help this team win. This team is going in a losing direction. Terrence Ross needs to go in a winning direction. I don't see him staying on this roster long term. I think he would be gone. John and Thornwell, I don't really see them staying on this roster for a long period of time. They're going to try them. They're going to use them. They're going to see if they fit. Then they're going to replace them with somebody else. And Wagner, I like him. He's a guy that can be a glue guy, a guy that could be a solid passer, a guy that can space the floor, and a guy that can make shots timely, you know, given the minutes. He's still raw. He got to figure out the NBA game, the speed of it, the strength of it. And he also got to understand what's going to really make him special and stand out in the league. He's years away from actually knowing what that's going to be. He's going to have to have a lot of trial and error with his offense, especially because at the end of the day, he never was really a go-to scorer that you can just get the ball to. He can get you a bucket. But he can be that on this team in the future. They need a legitimate wing, especially one that got size and can play defense. Wagner gives them that. He's just not there this year. Well, Bogner, I think they call him. And then Maurice, I don't really see him being a huge part of this team. He's very raw. You know, he, he can be a solid rotation big, but it's just better bigs on this team. And honestly and truthfully, we'll just see what he becomes. And then the last guy is um, Jalen Suggs. I'm not really high on Jalen Suggs. I'm not a real huge fan of Jalen Suggs. But I understand why people like him. He's a guy that's going to compete, give you defense, give you some type of three-point shooting, give you a guy that can play in the pick and roll, attack the basket. Just not a great scorer, not an amazing scorer. Not really a guy that you can get a ball to and get high caliber offense from. That's going to be a problem with him in Orlando because that's the type of guy that they need. Maybe two to three years from now, he gets a little bit more confidence. He adds a little bit more to his bag. can do a little bit more off the dribble. But if he's just going to be a guy that's going to hit spot up threes, get to the basket every blue moon and run transition, he'll be a starter. He'll be a solid starter in his league, but not a superstar guy in his league. I can see Jalen Suggs being a potential all-star just because if he helps the team win, he gives you 25-5, and five, for example, then it'd be like one of them Jeff T. Kyle Corver all-stars. He played his fit, played his role, helped the team win. He can be an all-NBA defender because he has the speeds and the size and the want to defend. You don't really see a lot of guys wanting to defend. You don't really see a lot of guys that even put the effort to do it. That's his reputation. We'll see if it's going to happen in the league. Just because point guard is one of the most dominant, you know, positions in the league. Everybody can shoot. Everybody can score. There's a lot of pick and roll and a lot of switching happening. So it could be tough for Jalen Suggs to keep up and understand that, especially because the screens are going to be set. He's going to have to fight over them. He's going to have to go through them. Will he have the body? He's been injured a lot to be able to get through that. And on top of that, will he have the ability to score and keep up? Will you have to carry that whole huge weight load on both ends of the court each and every night? 
They don't have a lot of scoring options, don't have a lot of go-to guys. Jalen Suggs will be able to put up numbers. He's going to get his assists. He's going to get his rebounds. He's going to be able to score. The question will be, will he be efficient? Can he be a good three-point shooter? He don't have to be great or elite as a rookie. Will his defense really be as outstanding as people say? It's a whole nother league, a whole different talent pool, and he really got to figure things out on the fly because he's most likely going to be their starter. He's going to be frustrated. He's going to be angry. It's going to be really tough to watch this year because this team is just so bad talent-wise. But that's what builds you. You know, the struggle, the cons this consistent failure, it, it really makes you great, you know, if, it, if you really put the right time and work in and if you really love it. But it also can show what you really are. Are you a starter? Are you a role player? Can you take it and build up and become something bigger? A lot of people don't, as we've seen throughout Orlando history. They have a couple superstars. Most of them leave or get injured or never become one. We've done seen that the last couple of years. All these guys they bred in never became an all-star form. Will Jalen Suggs break that mold, become an all-star caliber guy that can grow with this team, give them that toughness and that defense, a guy that can understand the game, the pace of the game, control the, the fluidity of the game just by being smart and ahead of people. He uses his brain a lot. He's very patient, too. Pick your spots. Take your time. Don't force it. Don't rush it. Use your athleticism once you get the screen. Get the first step or the dribble crossover and just make the right decision. Those small little things can take you a long way in this NBA league. It's going to be hard, though, because you're playing against the point guard. You're playing against a lot of switches. And you got to, you know, get beat up and toe up just because you don't know enough. But stay with it. Rock with it. And at the end of the day, ask a lot of questions. And on top of that, stay in the gym. Stay in the field room. Soak as much knowledge as you can. Just because you want to be great in this league, you got to really be playing a lot of games and really trying to grind through it. May take you two or three years from now to figure it out. But you have the NBA-ready body and understanding of the game. Now we just got to see you do at the NBA level. I'll be watching Orlando. I'll see what they can do. I have a lot of young pieces. I have a lot of guys that can play defense. I have a lot of, you know, guys with potential, but they still have a lot of talent that they got to figure out what mesh, what can they become, will they live up to it. Potential is a good thing to have, but it has to be developed. It has to be, you know, put together the right way with the right coach and the right system to really get everything fixed and worked out. These guys are real young. They don't understand how to win. They don't understand how to play the game at the highest level because they haven't done it or haven't done it enough or haven't done it at all. So it's going to be hard for this team to figure these things out. That's why it's going to be taking years for this team to be something special. But they have a good, you know, they have a good roster right now, three years from now, if everything comes together. They made it to the playoffs. Now they're trying to have bigger dreams and try to win the title. A lot of their guys look good, but they have to put it all together. The mentality, the athleticism, the understanding, the IQ, the work, the strength, all of it has to come together for this entire roster, for them to get over that hump and over them demons to become a legitimate team in the East again. That was 10 years ago. They got to the finals, didn't get it done. They got to the finals with Shaq, didn't get it done. They're trying to break that curse and get it done in Orlando for the first time. It hasn't been easy because they haven't got it done. Now they're trying to figure it out. Now they're trying to put it together. Now we got to see it out as fans. And we can see if they get it done. And I'm watching every single player, every single thing y'all do. And we can see what y'all become years from now as a group and as a team. Quentin Wade, that's fun. Now since I'm gone, I'm watching.